Hello, something a little bit different. Those of you who come along on a regular basis will know that I've been working through some of the poems of Marriott Ektra. About Albert. Yes. Albert Ramsbottom. So this is another one. And this is called Albert and the Eggsman. Done in a Lancashire accent. On young Albert, Al sorry, on young Albert Ramsbottom's birthday, his parents asked what he'd like most. He said to see Tower of London and gaze upon Anne Boleyn's ghost. They felt this request were unusual, and at first to refuse were inclined. Till Pa said a trip to Metropolis might broaden the little lad's mind. They took Sheriff Bank up to London and got there at quarter to five. Then seeing as box wasn't open, they went straight away to the tower. They didn't think much to the building. Twarn't what they'd been led to suppose. And the bloody tower didn't impress them. They said Blackpool's got one of those. At last Albert found a beef eater and filled old chap with alarm by asking for ghost of Anne Bolin as carried her head neath her arm. Said beef eater, you ought to come Fridays. He was Lancashire as well. If it's ghost of old Anne Bolin you see, her union now limits her output and she only gets one walk a week. But he said if it's ghosts that you're after, there's Lady Jane Grey's to be seen. She runs around chased by the headsman at midnight on Old Tower Green. They waited off Green till near midnight, then thinking they'd time for a sup, they took out what food they brought with them and waited for ghosts to turn up. On the first stroke of twelve, up jumped Albert, his mouth full of cold, dripping toast. With his stick, with his horse's head handle, he pointed and said, Here's the ghost. They felt their skins going all goosey as Lady Jane Spectre drew near. And Albert Fair swallowed his tonsils when the headsman and all did appear. The headsman chased Jane round the grass patch. They saw his axe flash in the moon. And seeing as poor lass were headless, they wondered what next he would prune. He suddenly caught sight of Albert as midnight was on its last chime. As he lifted his axe, father murmured, We'll get the insurance this time. At that, Mother Rose taking umbrage. She said, put that cleaver away. You're not cutting our Albert's head off. Young collar will clean on today. The brave little lad stood undaunted till the ghost were within half a pace. Then taking the toast he were eating, slapped it dripping side down in his face. To a proper setback for the headsman, he let out one owl of despair. Then taking his lady friend with him, he disappeared, just like that, there. When poor Pa saw the way they vanished, he trembled with fear and looked blue, till Ma went and patted his shoulder and said, It's all right, lad, we saw it too. Some say it's where the dripping has done it, from a roast leg of mutton it came. And as Thetsman had been a beef eater, they reckon he vanished from shame. And around Tower Green from that moment, they'd ne'er seen a sign of the ghost. But when beef eaters go on night duty, they take slices of cold dripping toast. Thank you very much.